welcome back everyone. Um, in this video we are using EIGRP as the PE to CE routing protocol. So we've done BGP, we've done OSPF, now we're on EIGRP. I've reset the network to where we were at the end of the first video. So MPLS is working, the BGP core configuration is working and all of the VRFs are configured. So we are basically in the same place we were at the end of the first video. So I've wiped all of the PE to C routing information off from the last video. So what we need to do is we need to configure EIGRP between the customer and us on each of these links and then on the PEs we need to do mutual redistribution between EIGRP and BGP to get the EIGRP routes from the customers into BGP and then on the other end get them out of BGP back into EIGRP and down to the customers. So we'll start on customer A site 1 and we'll work our way across so if we come on to PE1 what we need to do on here is begin the ERGRP configuration so what we need to do is go into router ERGRP will pick 1 as the autonomous system number and within here because we are working with VRFs um, we have to go into the address family for IPv4, specify the VRF of customer A, and then we also need to specify an autonomous system, which in this case it will use 65001, which is the ASN of this customer site. So within here we just do the normal network commands for 80.1.17.0, which is this interface here. Um, no specifying of areas because we're using EIGRP. So actually if we go back into there, in here we need to do redistribute, choose BGP and our autonomous system for BGP is 65991 and then here we need to configure uh, a metric. So this is all the stuff that's required by BGP, not BGP, sorry. This is all of the stuff required by EIGRP. So we need to set um, a bandwidth. We'll just, we'll use bogus values for this for the moment. It doesn't, for, for lab purposes, it doesn't have to be exactly correct. But if this has been run in production, then you want to ma make sure you manipulate these metrics to your advantage so we'll just set some stuff on here there we go so that, that's the full command so if we come out of here and into router BGP 65991 into the address family of IPv4 for the VRF customer A and then here we need to redistribute EIGRP into BGP and all we need to do here is specify the AS number which is up here what did we use 65001 So there we go, that's the configuration that we need on the PE for now. So if we do a show run section yeah, GRP. And we'll also do BGP so we can see the configuration on both sides. So because we're using VRFs, we've had to go into a specific instance of I of IPv6. EIGRP for the VRF and specified an autonomous system and then we're redistributing the BGP routes into EIGRP we specified the network that will allow us to make a neighbourship come up here and then within BGP much like the configuration with OSPF within the address family for IPv4 with the VRF we are redistributing EIGRP into BGP so if we come on to CECUSTA1 double check 
interfaces, interfaces up, we don't have a loop back, so let's configure one. Slash 32 mask. And then this is just a normal ERGRP configuration. So network. We'll do 80.1.17.0. We should see this come up very quickly because EIGRP is fast. There we go. And then we'll configure the loop back as a network as well. So that came up very, very quickly. What we can do is come on to PE1. We can see that's come up there as well. And then to to view that neighbor, we do a show IP EIGRP specify VRF and then specify the VRF name and then do neighbors. What we can see there that the neighborship has come up if we just expand that slightly. There we go. We can see everything looks looks normal there. So if we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all again within here we can see the loopback that's come from this router here and we can also see the link net that's been advertised into BGP as well and again we can tell these have been redistributed because the path is unknown it's got a little question mark there so we need to now do a similar configuration on PE2 and CE Custer A site 2 so if we come onto PE2 and go into router ERGRP1 address family IPv4 for VRF Cosma A set the autonomous system to 65002 which is the ASM we're using down here and then set the network command for 80.1.19.0 slash 30 wildcard and then in here we'll redistribute BGP 65991 and making sure that we do the same with the metrics so 1000 100 255 1 and then we'll set the MTU so we'll come out of there and then we'll go into BGP configuration mode and go into the address family for IPv4 with the VRF custom A we'll redistribute EIGRP into BGP the autonomous system we used was here 65002 and that is all the configuration we need on there so if we come on to CE cost A2 so on here let's check that. Yeah, we've got an IP address, but we don't have a loopback, so let's fix that. IP address 10.2.2.2 slash 32 mask. And then, much like we did on the other C router, going to router EIGRP autonomous system 65002. Set the network to 80.1.19.0 with a slash 30 wildcard. We should see that come up very quickly. And then do the same for the loopback. So, we can see that's come up there. And again, on the PE, we can see that's come up there. So if we do a show IP EIGRP VRF cost a neighbors you can see that neighbor there and if we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all we can see that we've got all four routes here so we've got the loopbacks of both the routers and then we've got the slash 30 link nets so what we should see on both customer routers is we've got some external EIGRP routes here that have come in from the PE and then again on here show IP route and again you can see the same thing on here so what we should be able to do is from the site 2 router 
we should be able to ping 10.1.1.1 which is the loopback on site A1 which is here and again we don't have to specify, well we shouldn't have to specify the source for this because both routers know about the interfaces on these interfaces here so yeah there we go that's working fine and we can do a trace route we can see we're getting some MPLS labels and that is working for customer A so continue back on PE2 and do the exact same configuration for customer B so router EIGRP one and then in here address family IPv4 VRF customer B this time we'll set the autonomous system to 65003 and then in here we'll do the network command for 80.1.20.0 with a slash 30 wildcard and then we'll redistribute BGP 65991 and again specify the metrics there we go we'll come out of there and go into router BGP 65991 and into the address family for IPv4 under the VRF for cost B and we'll redistribute ERGRP with the autonomous system 65003 that's all the configuration we need to do on P2 so if we come down to this router here see cost B2 and double check interfaces interfaces up again we don't have a loop back so just a different address then come into router ERGRP 65003 ERGRP and do network commands for 80.1.20.0 with a slash 30 wildcard that should come up pretty quickly and do it for the loopback 2 Oop, specify net right so that's come up on the CE as we can see by this message and on the PE we can see as well we can do a show IP EIGRP VRF cost B neighbours we can see that neighbour there and likewise show BGP VPNV4 unicast all and looking under VRF customer B we can see those two routes that have come in from that router just there so we just need to finally replicate the same configuration on PE3 and uh, customer B site 1 so on PE3 come into router EIGRP1 address family IPv4 for the VRF customer B and the autonomous system over here is 65004 so I believe the network is yep yeah, 10.1.18 so what oh, sorry 80.1.18 the slash 30 wildcard and then we'll redistribute BGP 65991 with the metric 1000 100 255-1-1500 so like it out of here I'll go into BGP configuration mode so router BGP 65991 for the address family of IPv4 for the VRF customer B and again we'll redistribute EIGRP into BGP the autonomous system is 65,004 so that's all the configuration we need to do on PE3 the rest of the configuration we'll do on customer B site 1 so if we come over here and again show IP interface brief double check we don't have a loop back 
So IP address 10.4.4.4 slash 32 mask. And again, we'll do a normal EIGRP configuration for autonomous systems 65004. Set the network for 80.1.18.0 the slash 30 wildcard. And then also add the loop back into there. So we can see that neighbourship has come up on here. And then on the PE, the neighbourship has come up as well. So if we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all, we can see all four routes for the VRF customer B. So we should be able to come on to both the customer B routers, the CE router, sorry, and do a show IP route. And again, we've got two external EIGRP routes here. And then on site two, do a show IP route. We've got, again, two external EIGRP routes. So from um, CE cost B2, we should be able to ping the loop back on CE cost B1, which is over here. And the IP address of that is 10.4.4.4. Again, we shouldn't have to specify a source interface because both of the routers know of all of the interfaces on these routers. So and we can see that succeeding. We can also do a trace route to 10.4.4.4. And that's working, and we can see MPLS labels in the path, so we can we can see that is definitely going across the MPLS network. So that is the full configuration. Actually, let's just verify on P1. We know everything's working, but just to check, show BGP VPN v4 unicast all. We can see all eight routes for both the customers in here, with the route distinguishers obviously we don't see the VRFs up here because we don't have the VRFs configured on P1 because there's no there's no need to um, this is where the route distinguishers come into play because this is how the routes are being distinguished basically so that is using EIGRP as the CE to PE routing protocol um, the next video will be on static routing um, how that works because it's a bit of a bit of a different ball game um, but I hope to see you there.